Well, hey folks, how are you? Don Grant, CTC Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another exciting episode of In The Loop TV, sponsored by RV Performance Company. Folks, before we get started with this episode, again, as a formality, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the share button, all that good stuff. Also, go to our webpage and subscribe to In The Loop blog. Great articles on there, great charts, technical stuff about cutting tools. It's a great resource to actually check out. This episode's gonna be fun. Why is it fun? Well, you know me, I like to mix it up. We're gonna talk about something called carbon. Carbon? What does carbon have to do with cutting tools? Well, that's the beauty of this episode. We're gonna talk about carbon in materials. I'm kind of a closet metallurgist. I love materials. And the more we understand about the materials and how carbon affects those materials, the better we can use our cutting tools. So this is gonna be good. Even if you don't use a lot of cutting tools, you're gonna to learn a little bit about how carbon affects certain materials. And let's be honest, carbon's been pretty much around longer than this guy. Whoa, why so angry? What? Whoa, oh, angry. He must buy his cutting tools from somebody else. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining us. And I apologize for that uh, creature in the uh, earlier episode. It's probably better looking than I am, so you're probably okay. Um, so we're talking about carbon. And you've probably heard a lot when you're looking at materials. And we're mainly talking about steel. Not as much stainless. We're not into non-ferrous aluminums. We're not talking about that. We're just going to talk about carbon and steel. You've heard low carbon materials, medium carbon materials, high carbon materials. Then you have tool steels. Then you have alloy steels. You have all these material and steels that have different makeups. We're going to talk a little bit how the carbon affects those steels and how you can identify those carbons within that steel gonna be fun but you know where we got to go we gotta run to the shop and talk about it next well hey folks before we get started in the material and breaking it down and teaching you how to identify carbon in materials especially steels let's talk about two points that I want you to think about through this episode when we're talking about carbon number one is the higher the carbon content in the material the harder that material can get through a process called heat treating we ain't diving into heat treating. I told you I was a closet metallurgist, but I, I don't want to get into heat treating. So the more carbon that's in that material, the harder it can get. Okay, that's number one. Understand that. The second point that I wanted to bring up is carbon is hard. It's like diamond, carbon, diamond, stuff like that. Even think of carbon fiber. Very hard and very abrasive. So when you're cutting something that's very abrasive, like sandpaper or something like that, think of it like sandpaper, the more carbon that's in your material, the more abrasive the material is. And I got some friends that are pretty abrasive, so I know all about abrasive. So two points that we're trying to make here. The more carbon content, the harder that material can get. The more carbon content, the more abrasive that material is to your cutting tool. It's important to know because you got to put the right coatings on it. You got to use the right substrate, submicron, grain structure, and all that. That's what this whole point is about. So now let's just dive into the material a little bit more and see if I can't get you to understand how to identify carbon in certain materials and use it a little bit better. So first, let's just talk about alloy steels. Alloy steels, which means it's a combination of different alloys and a steel that you can use for your material. We all cut it. We might not know what it's always used for, but you need to understand what's in it when you cut it and how to identify it. First point I want to make is we talked about carbon content has to do the higher amount of carbon, the harder it can get through a process called heat treat. I want everybody to understand out there that 0.3% carbon and less in your material will not heat treat all the way through. So the only thing we can do with a material that has less than 0.3% carbon is to case harden it. Why am I explaining this? Well, because once you're identifying 
materials as we get in here, if it has less than 0.3% carbon and somebody tells you, hey, this is 58 Rockwell. 58 Rockwell is a hardness on the outside. We're not diving into it. Hopefully you understand this. Put some comments and questions. We can go in there. Somebody says it's 58 Rockwell, but it has less than 0.3% carbon in it. That means it was case hardened, which means from a cutting tool and a machinist perspective, understand that all the way through that material, it's probably not 58 Rockwell. Think about this, because if you're drilling, tapping, reaming, and you're through that case hardening, this makes a lot of sense. So first off, we need to have more than 0.3% carbon in our material to through harden that through a process called heat treating. Let's start with an alloy steel real quick for we can identify what that is. Now an alloy steel is exactly that. It's has a combination of different alloys in it, right? That's what an alloy steel is. Usually identified by a four digit number. Let's just look at a 4140. That number is four digits. First two numbers mean one thing. Second two numbers mean a different thing. Let's just break it down for you can understand how to identify this. So the first two numbers I are identifying what alloy makeup that is. You can look at a chart. I'll even post a chart here. Maybe we can put something below. Like a 41 is a digit that has certain alloys that identify that material. Okay. Carbon steels are in the tens, 11s, and 12. That's a carbon steel. Manganese, you start going to the 14s as the number gets up. The first two digits are the alloys that are in there. Got it? Get it? That's fine. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about carbon. The last two digits in an alloy steel are the carbon content. Now we're talking about 4140. 41 is the alloy makeup. That's the serial number or basically the nomenclature for the number that says the alloy that's made up in it. The second two numbers is 40, 40. Put a decimal in front of that, that is 0.4. That means 4140 has 0.4 four percent of carbon. Got it? Is it making sense? So let's grab another one. 1018. 1018 material. 10, that's a carbon steel. Again, look at the chart. 18.18. It has 0.18 percent of carbon in it. Okay? Now you can identify that. The second number in an alloy steel is the carbon content. Now I'm going to tell you the higher amount of carbon, like we just talked about, the more abrasive and the harder the material can get. So let's just start at a 1018. 1018, 0.18% of carbon. I just said you gotta have 0.3 or higher. So the only thing you can do with 1018, 1020s, 8620s, anything that has less than 0.3% carbon cannot be heat treated fully. You have to add carbon and it's gonna be case hardened. Now you know that. So if you see anything that's a 1018, you can only case harden it. 4140 has 0.4% carbon. You can heat treat over 0.3% carbon. But the more carbon, the harder it gets. So the 0.4% carbon is not going to get as hard as if it had 1% carbon. So that's alloy steels. Understand the carbon content is the second two digits. The first two digits is the nomenclature of the alloys that are actually making that up and they're grouped like that and again you can check that out. So now you know the carbon content. Anything over 0.3% can get hard. Anything less than 0.3% has to be case hardened. You have to bring more carbon into it in order to get it hard and you can only go so thick so you've got a skin on the outside. Makes it a little bit easier to machine. So now let's talk about tool steels and maybe even some mold steels. First of all, a little trivia here, tool steels. Do you know why they call them tool steels? Which is your A2s, your D2s, your O1s, your W2s, all those, your S7s. Those are called tool steels. Why are they called tool steels? Captain Obvious says is because those are materials that are used to make tools. Tools are very hard. They need to be very hard. So what do you think the carbon content is in a tool steel? It's a lot harder. It's a lot harder. You're getting up to 1%, 1 percent, one and a half percent, D2, one and a half percent, A2, one percent. So the higher the carbon content in the tool steels, the harder it can get. 60 Rockwell, 62 Rockwell, and the more abrasive 
that material is in the annealed state. Let's jump into mold steels. Mold steel is the same thing. They're for molds. A little bit less rock wall. These are your P20s, your H13s, if you get into those materials. A little bit less carbon content in the H13s, but enough to get it hard enough. Now understand that the carbon content is usually in the annealed state. That's where we're seeing the abrasiveness with the cutting tools. As you start bringing in the hardness in the rock wall, you have different things going on. Now you need strong, you need strength because it's harder to make a chip with that. So let's just briefly talk about 400 series stainless steel, right? Because when I am applying cutting tools to a uh, customer's application, first thing we gotta ask is what's the material? This is why this carbon content is very important to understand because you can learn from this and you can ask a series of questions, right? If somebody says, hey, I'm machining A2 tool steel, okay, and you know the carbon content, the next question is, okay, what state, what's the hardness of that? Because I know if you're using A2 tool steel, you're probably gonna heat treat it. So is it annealed or is it hardened? And to what rock well is it hardened? Now, when I hear somebody say 400 series stainless, 400 versus 300 series stainless, 400 series stainless has carbon. So I know 400 series stainless has carbon. So the next question out of my mouth, what is the rock well? Because I know it can be heat treated. So carbon content, number one, directly related to the heat treating, right? So I want you to think of that. When you look at a material that has carbon and it has a higher amount of carbon, usually your customer is probably either wants it heat treated or wants it in a harder state. Now you can machine it one of two ways and that's pretty much up to you. Folks, this is why carbon or materials are defined as low carbon, medium carbon, and high carbon. Let's just run through the, the, the gamut of it. Low carbon is usually 0.05% up to 0.3% carbon. That's, you know, that's your materials that aren't gonna be able to be heat treated, but are gonna be case hardened. Then you go from 0.4 to 0.7% carbon, your medium carbon, then your 0.7 all the way up is your high carbon. The reason they identify it that way is, again, my opinion is two reasons, to identify how abrasive that material is gonna be, that's how I'm looking at it, but also understand how hard that material can get based on the carbon content. So let's talk about that now. Now that we've described carbon content in there, let's talk about how it affects your cutting tool and then how you wanna attack materials with higher amounts of carbon. So now we really have to understand how to use the cutting tool with something with carbon. How do we use this cutting tool effectively? I usually look at two things. As a national application engineer, uh, how to attack something that has high carbon in it. So let's just run down it real quick. The first thing you're gonna do when you have a material that has high carbon and it's very abrasive, remember I said it's abrasive. I'm gonna give you an example here in a little bit. If it's very abrasive, number one, you wanna go with carbide. Try and stay away from high-speed steel. It'll really wear your cutting edge very quickly. Go with carbide. So your substrate, substrate wants to be carbide. That's number one. Number two is you want to go, especially in steels, with a PVD hard coating. Usually co co companies like us identify what coating is recommended, but you want a very hard coating because hard coating is going to make up for that abrasiveness and it's going to protect your carbide before it gets down there. Now that's number one. Number two, what I'm looking at is my speeds and feeds. Because if something's very abrasive, this is my thought process. Think of your fingernails on a piece of sandpaper, okay? The faster I go with those fingernails on that sandpaper, the quicker my nails are gonna wear, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna be mindful of how many revolutions that cutting tool is making in the material. You might never have heard this before, so I'm giving you how my brain works. So we want to limit how many passes my cutting tool makes in that material. So I'm not always thinking light radial, high surface foot, and a lot of revolutions. I'm kind of taking a heavy radial, I'm dropping my surface foot, and maximizing my cutting tool in cut. Because the more revolutions it's in cut, 
the quicker your nails are going to wear down. So just be mindful of that and think about that. That's my key to success is using carbide, using a PVD coating, really hard coating, and then being mindful of your surface foot and not just kind of running that RPM up, taking a light radio. You'll have really good success with that. Okay, folks, it's recap time. What are we talking about? We're talking about carbon content, carbon content in steels. There's a lot of different steels. They have a lot of different amounts of carbon. What does carbon do for us? Well, it does two things. The more carbon that's in your steel, the harder that material can get. It also makes it very abrasive. We got to be mindful of that. We got to make sure cutting tools attack two things. How hard is the material by the carbon content and how abrasive by how much carbon's in that material. Oh, don't forget, if we have less than 0.3% carbon in our material, you can't heat treat it. You can only case harden it. You got to introduce carbon into the material in order to get it harder. You can get it up to 5860 Rockwell, but it's only going to be to a certain depth. Be mindful of that. How do you attack that? Well, cut it with the right cutting tools and you'll be good to go. Oh yeah, what else are we talking about? 4140s materials that are alloy steels have four digit numbers. What's the first digit number? The first two digits identify what class of material it's in there. What alloy and elements are introduced in that? But what's the important part? Is the last two digits. What do the last two digits tell us in an alloy steel? Carbon content. That's your carbon content. 4140 means 0.4% carbon. 8620 means 0.2% carbon. Now you can identify how much carbon's in alloy steel. Tool steels have a lot of carbon in it. Mold steels have a lot of carbon. Why? They want to make the material harder. Be mindful of that. You're going to be able to evaluate your material a lot better. You're going to be able to attack it with your cutting tools. And if you can't, you call us. We'll help you get there. And that's what carbon is about. Hey folks, that's it. That's about carbon. Hopefully I didn't bore you. Hopefully you got to better understand how carbon affects your material when you're actually cutting it. Listen, I want you guys to do me a favor out there. Please use the comments below. Let me know if you like these episodes where we branch off a little bit and we talk about materials. Because if you ask me, when I dissect a problem at the spindle, I need to know everything. I need to know what the holder's doing. I need to know what the machine tool is doing. I want to know how that material acts. I want to know how the setup looks. I want to know what's going on for I can make sure we diagnose it. And if you learn those things, you're going to be able to do it at your spindle, your own, and you won't have to call us as much. That's a good thing. We appreciate that. Hopefully these education things are going well for you. Please hit the like, please hit the subscribe. And I want to tell you guys something. I want to tell everybody out there. And if you want this, put it in the comments. We'll find out. I got t-shirts. In the loop t-shirts. In the loop on the front. Death taxes and spring passes on the back. And don't you forget one last thing before we go. Three things in life we'll never get away from. Death taxes and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.